Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that hopefully you're watching this in black and white because although this is not a photo inspiration, I kind of don't want you to see the result of this until much further into the film. I am completely honoured that the beautiful Nona has asked me to join in with her destination inspired collab that she has going on her channel. So, Nona sent me a photo to look from. I sent Nona a different photo to create a look from. So the only way to find out what these photos are, which palettes were used, and what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor darling, you're just gonna have to grab a drink Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy watching the film. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I'm actually filming in daylight for once. Hey! Right, hopefully the intro was in black and white. I haven't forgotten yet. But this is not my usual series. I was absolutely delighted when the gorgeous Nona asked me would I like to take part in her destination series that she started where um, the person that she's collabing with sends her a photograph of a destination or a country and she sends them a, a different picture and that's what you create your looks off of <clears throat> and I was really delighted that she asked me to be part of this really hoping she would. This is the picture that she sent me which uh, is in London. I know that because I've driven down that street. Um, so you've got, they're all pastel. So you've got the pink house, then you've got the, the blue house with the lilac porch, then you've got the yellow house, the peach house and the pink house with the blue sky. So, initially I was going to use my uh, Loose Pigments from Crow and Pebble, but that didn't have a pink. Had a peach, had a lilac, had a lemon, had a blue, but didn't have pink. So I thought I would grab my little sugar pill fun size, because this has all of those shades in it. Trying to get it so that you're not dazzled by the hollow. There we go. So, lilac, blue, pink, pink, yellow, peach. Yeah. Well, that's more of an orange than a peach, but... It's a shame there isn't a greenhouse as well, because these two are beautiful, but... As with my photo inspiration, I can only use the colours that are in the picture. Can't add anything to it. Don't have to use all of them, but there we go. I sent her very different picture, so if you want to see exactly what her look is based on, you're just going to have to go to her channel once you finish watching me and check it out. She is linked in the description box below. So make sure, as soon as you finish watching me, once you've liked and, you know, commented and maybe shared, possibly. Yeah. Yes, I have got a visitor. It's unwanted, uninvited, and if it stays much longer, I'm charging it rent. I think, actually, it's a bite, because it itches like mad and spots don't normally itch. Anyway, that's the picture, that's the premise. This is still a teaching channel. Um, 
so because of my chronic pain I can't blend very quickly anyway but I want this to be a teaching channel I want people who've never picked up a brush before to be able to follow my tutorial so it's all done in real time I don't cut any blending out the only thing I do off camera is chuck my foundation on otherwise the film will be over an hour long so if I am going too slowly for you up there is a speed widget please feel free to use it now regular viewers will know I'm about to discuss eye shapes so if you want to fast forward through that bit actually fast forwarding is going to be that direction isn't it yeah if you want to fast forward through that bit that's absolutely fine I will wave a brush at you with some color on it when it's time to press play Right, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. So let's get you zoomed in. As you can see, I come in really close so you can actually see what's going on. Now, this primer that I have on is my Crow and Pebble primer in cotton, which is pure white. As you can see, this was completely full. This is my second pot, and I'm already making a big dent out of it. Um, I don't use any other eye primer now, apart from that one. I absolutely love it. It goes on dry, so you can blend on it straight away. Um, I just love it. It doesn't crease through here. You don't need to set it with a translucent powder, so you get full impact of the shadows. It's just, it's really great. She's doing it in six shades at the moment, white is the lightest, the deepest ones are a chocolate brown and a black, and then there's three skin tone shades in between. I do have a discount code, I don't earn from it if you want to save some pennies and you want to try it out. It's all detailed in the description box along with all of my other discount codes. Okay? I am not the kind of person that pushes my discount codes every single time, but I do mention this because I use it every time and it is by far the best eyeshadow primer I've used. It's better than the primer potion. I mean, I haven't touched my MAC Soft Ochre paint pot for months. As you can see, it is starting to dry up around the edges because it's been so long since I last used it. But MAC Soft Ochre on me at least, gives a bit of a yellow tinge because I'm so pale. And Painterly, which is the pink based one. Mm, shadows don't blend as well on that as they do on the soft ochre, I've noticed. But I love this one because being pure white, it doesn't change the shadows at all. Now, eye shapes. I've actually got deep set eyes, but a lot of people who have deep set eyes, like myself, mistakenly believe or are mistakenly informed that they have hooded lids because we get the same issues. We get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease we have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just on the socket. And if we're using glitters, even with glitter glue, we get bare patch right through the middle. Now, I'm going to explain to you how to work out which eye shape you have and then I'm going to tell you how to do a workaround for each shape so that you can still follow any tutorial that you find on YouTube or anywhere else for that matter. So I'm just grabbing a couple of um, brushes that I'm going to need a bit later. Now, when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much of it, but you can see it all, so I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. With deep set eyes like I have, if I cover, because this is the eye that I'm blinding, so I can close this one, and make sure I'm still in focus and in screen. If I cover my visible mobile lid and then close my eye, 
you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid space that tucks back away. And if I cover the static lid and do the same, I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together which give me the same issues that people with hooded lid get. But the workarounds are very different. Now, if you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously, that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow. So use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary go right up to the brow without leaving a gap. I normally only do that with editorial looks, but if you are really short on real estate space here, you may find that you have to go right up to the brows. If you have deep set eyes like I've got, what we have to do is sit back every so often when we're blending and just check that any deeper colour we've put through the crease here is visible when we open our eyes. So, two very different workarounds for two very different eye shapes. Now, I am going to start off with a Jeffrey Morphe synthetic brush. JS, God, why did you have to put it in white on pale pink? JS8. Let me have another check at my photo. Right, so the house at the front is the pink one, then the lilac one. Lilac stripe blue, then the yellow. Okay. So I'm going to start off in level up. And now's the time for people that were fast forwarding to stop and press play. Just tapping off back into onto the top of the pan so that I get as little fallout as possible with this. I'm going to start this very lightly, little circular movements. Now I'm holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on as possible. And you can see when I'm going this way, I circle in this direction. Then when I want to come back, I circle in the opposite direction. The reason for that is because I'm 45, I've lost a lot of weight and the skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing this, you help to cover up any sort of barcoding that you can get. The only exception I've got is this eye here, which as you can see has got some really deep creasing just there. Which was caused when the ophthalmic hospital pulled my eye around when I was five years old. So yes, damage from years ago can show up years later. Because that didn't actually start appearing on me until I hit about... Oh. 42 I noticed that the creases was really deep just there but you can see what I mean about being able to blend straight on this primer which I love so I'm just really buffing over that soften it as much as I can I'm just gonna bring it down on this inner corner here a little bit just so that when my eyes are open it completely comes down to there. a little bit stronger of a pink than I was expecting but it doesn't matter I'll make it work and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing over on this side. Now because I don't photoshop my looks and I don't need any filters or anything, I'm not James Charles. You do, oh, please excuse my throat groaning like that. You do have to sort of keep sitting back and just checking that the shapes are the same because you know your eyes are not symmetrical and if you're not going to be um, face tuning them like certain people do and you sometimes find you have to do a bit of a different shape on one side to the other just so they look the same when they're blended out it's 
So, Nona. She is one of the kindest people on the YouTube platform. I have never heard her say a bad word about anybody. Not even the person that is the reason that she, I and Anya are part of the Beaches of Eastwick. And believe me, that person deserves to be spoken about badly. But Nona doesn't even do that. She always has something positive to say about your look. She always comments on films for you so you get the interaction. And she's just an all round lovely person. She's got such a big heart, she really has. But I'm just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth. I much prefer using a washcloth to a colour switch. It's much friendlier and more gentle on your brushes. Especially if, I mean this is a synthetic brush, but if you're using natural hair brushes, please don't use a colour switch, they are so harsh on them. Right, what was next? The bluey lilac -y one. Okay. So I think I'm going to start off with the lilac. Because blue plus pink would make lilac. Does it make sense to put this one next? I'm just going to buff it into that pink and bring it along a little bit. Really blending those colours together. Really soften the blend where the two colours meet. And as you can see, I like to leave about three or four mils if I can below my brow for my brow bone highlight. But if you are really restricted on space, then you know, do actually go right up to the brow. You can still add a brow bone highlight over the top of the colours, it's not a problem. Now, purples and blues are the most difficult colours to create, so I'm really quite pleased with how this lilac is blending. Nona does a lot of different um, films on her channel. She does a lot of hauls from places like Macari. Um, she, well, the first film of hers that I ever saw, she was using bits that she got from like the dollar store, the Dollar General, and that. And she made a rotating brush holder. The woman is so talented, not just with her eye looks, but you know she's she. Oh, honestly. She's just, she is so talented. There really is no end to her talents. She always used to be the queen of neutrals. But since she's been getting involved with more collabs, because as well as the picture inspiration car or photo inspiration collab on my channel, there's been other larger collabs that we've been involved with together and Bitches of Eastwick we do together. We also do the Three Continents One palette. Um, and it's just, it's, it's so lovely to see her experimenting with colours and enjoying experimenting with colours. I think there's a film she did recently where she, she used glitter for the first time. And honestly, I kept rewinding the film to watch it again and again and again because the absolute joy on her face when she put that glitter on was just, it was beautiful to watch. It really was. It was, it was almost like childlike joy. And she is, she has the innocence of a child. She has the 
the caring nature of a child unspoiled by the horrors that is the day to day living but she has that with the depth of learning and maturity of an adult which is, is rare to find nowadays it really is really is difficult to find as you can hear I'm cleaning my brush off again and I'm going to go into that was player one by the way I used level up first then I went into player one and now I'm about to go into this one which is on the floor it didn't break this is a problem with fibro though you suddenly lose grip right hold on to it a little bit tighter I'm about to go into this one which is 8 bit Putting that very gently back down on the top. Um, yeah, I've for new viewers, I've got a lot of chronic illnesses that I deal with. I've got arthritis through three quarters of my spine. Um, I have sciatica down my right hand side. Um, I have fibromyalgia, which if you've never heard of it. It's like arthritis of the muscles, um, so any muscle group can suddenly start hurting for no reason, as if you've just run a marathon the previous day or you know, you've done leg day at the gym, for example. Um, combined with that, my fibro makes it very difficult for me to control my body temperature, so I'm either running too hot or too cold. Which is why I, um, the lot, I always use an antiperspirant primer. I do struggle here and here with dry patches, by the way. If you're wondering why this blue isn't blending as well as the other two did, it's, be it's because I've got some dry patches on my eyes there. So I'm just being patient, just continuing to blend. Um, yeah, so I. Uh, I always use an antiperspirant primer. If I'm having a day where um, I'm particularly shiny, I'll put a mattifying primer underneath um, or a pore filling primer or anything else that I feel my skin needs. But then I'll always finish off with the antiperspirant primer to try and stop my face from being too sweaty because I get pain sweats as well as fibro sweats and anxiety sweats because I get panic attacks now as well which is just lovely um, the other issue that I have is that my skin is so sensitive with fibro um, particularly on my calves and my feet um, it feels like it feels like I've always got burning pins and needles in all my extremities hence why I sometimes drop things and I say sometimes I regularly drop things the number of, of times that I've had to cut out of films where I've dropped stuff and sworn because I do try and keep this as family friendly as possible because I'm aware that I have five young godchildren which could be watching me who, who, who could be watching me well the youngest one probably isn't he's only just turned one but you know he might be watching in the future um, yeah so I, I always have burning pins and needles um, in all my extremities but in my forearms and hands and shins and feet I also have what feels like a a combination of the worst sunburn you can imagine 
and then getting gravel rash on top of it. And then anytime someone touches you or your, your clothing, you know, the leg of your trousers touches you, it feels like somebody going in with a cheese grater. Just going to try and soften the blue this side just by going in and buffing it with my finger a little bit because if I continue to go at it with that brush it, it's currently feeling like I'm going at it with a Brillo pad anyway and these are super soft brushes so it's another issue that I get which is why I can't always sometimes I can film more than one film in a day most days I can't simply because I can't bear blending for too long on my eyes um, I'd always driven a manual car or a stick shift if you're American. Um, and then uh, three years ago I had to change to an automatic because my fibro got so bad in my left foot, which is obviously the clutch foot, um, that I, when I was driving it kept going dead and I couldn't feel it on the clutch, which obviously is extremely dangerous when you're driving in traffic. Um, particularly stop-start traffic in rush hour, for example. So I had to switch to an automatic car at that point. Now, I am going to talk you through doing a cut crease. Now, it's not that easy to do a cut crease on deep set eyes because you can't do what everybody else does and just cut through the socket and hope that will work because if I just hold this brush here and close my eye again if I just did the socket I then got almost a brush width again which will be tucked back in and will be effect and will be getting transfer so I'm going to show you the easy way of doing a cut crease regardless of your eye shape all right now i'm going to go in with this colourpop no filter concealer in fair 02 which is basically the white one and this brush that i've got here is a number 10 brush and it's actually designed for doing acrylic nails and you can see how thin it comes down and that to me is what's important because it gives you real control. I'm also going to grab a little mirror here to look down into so that I can make sure that you can still see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing. So to start off with, if you don't have this brush, um, a lip brush or a very, very fine concealer brush will do the job. Okay? Alright, boogers. Great. Right, so I'm going to get some of this white concealer and I'm just going to bung it very roughly all over the socket. And then I'm going to relax and blink my eyes a few times and that shows you where you need to cut the crease to. So then you get your brush and you pat into the concealer. And you just follow around and neaten up that line. Now as you can see I'm doing a full cut crease today. But this works just as well if you're only going to go halfway across the lid. So you put your concealer on just the socket and then relax your brows blink a few times and it transfers the concealer up onto your upper lid 
showing you exactly how high you need to cut in order that you don't end up with a messy look and then once I've got the shape sorted I pat over it very lightly with the brush just to make sure it's evenly spread and then I turn it over to the side that hasn't got any concealer on it and I repeat that and I pat over the eye again and what this does so it gets rid of any built up concealer that would end up mixing in with your shadows and making a mess. See how much additional concealer that's taken off? And then obviously as soon as you've finished using a cream, clean your brush off. I always keep these little plastic protector things because these go in with all my other brushes in the pot and I don't want the bristles to get mullered. Now, you can either go in with a different size of the acrylic brush or you can use a lip brush or you can use a smudger brush. I am going to go in with this lip brush to start with. This is again Jeffrey Morphe and it's number 24. It looks dirty but as you can see it's just stained. And I'm going to go into initially continue question mark which is the lemon yellow. This is an all matte palette. So this concealer at the moment is still a little bit sticky. So this should pat on without any problem at all. So I'm just very gently patting that on to the concealer. Clean the brush off and I'm going to go into high score which is the sort of peachy shade and I'm going to put a bit of this next to it. in with that yellow. Beauty of lip brushes is you can you can really get some accuracy with them which isn't always possible with blender brushes or concealer brushes. I'm just blending that in. And then I'm going to start from here and work back. So I'm going to pick up some of that blue, which is 8 bit. And I'm going to pop that on next. drag some of the uh, high school, the orange or the peach 
across onto that blue and of course the beauty with working with an all matte shadow is you don't have to keep drying off the brush before you go back in again you should never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush but because these are all mattes and we're not wetting them I can just go straight back in which is great Clean the brush off and I'm going to go into player one again which is the lilac and pop some of this on and you can see it falls pretty much at the same point here. Now if I can replicate that on the other eye it will be amazing. And again, pull the blue across onto the lilac. Clean the brush. And I'm going to go back into level up, which is that first pink that I used. that to finish off the outer edge. I really hope I managed to stay in frame for all of that because I'll find out when I'm editing. Right now see some slight barcoding there. I am having to very gently just tighten the eyelid up in order to cover that. Do not pull your lid around if you do not have to and if you do have to don't pull it out to your ear hole. Right, I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other eye, but I'm probably going to speed it up a tad and um, just pop some music on over the top so that it's not too long. I know I said I don't speed things up, but on this occasion I think I'm going to have to, especially having dropped a palette in between as well. But you can see that kind of just blends really nicely across the lid like that then. But I'm not done yet. Got my ice cream gloss looking gorgeous. Got some glitter on my eyes, I need more brush It ain't nothing, I can go on a Sephora spree I, I, I can paint you, but you know it's gonna be for a free Jeffrey, snap a pic, open PR packages Laura, I love that lash Sponsored post, yeah, I need cash Manny, we're looking hot House is full of shit, I bought Nikita, we'll turn you on See you whores at BeautyCon I've been living out my beauty guru fantasy Looking flawless with my beauty guru family It's so perfect and my time is not a beauty guru life So if you like this video then please subscribe Got my champagne bop, keep it stuck bop You can also use my code for the Oh. If I shut you out, I think I'd break your social blade I'll be 
He's snapping out with Nikki in the ocean shade. Jacqueline We're on a jet, waiting for my face to set. Classy girl, let's go out. Lily lashes looking fab. Redman, we're fucking stars. Vlogging in our matching cars. Shaggy, this gloss is fruity. See you, sisters, at Gen Beauty. I've been living out my beauty guru fantasy. Looking flawless with my beauty guru family. So if you like this video, then please subscribe. If it ain't nothing, I can go on a support free. If I shut you out, I think I'd break your social blade. Social blade, social blade. I think I'd break your social blade. It ain't nothing, nothing, nothing. Social, social, social blade. If I shut you out, I think I'd break your social blade. Social blade, social blade. I think I'd break your social blade. Right. That's that way done. Now I always get more fallout on this eye because this is the eye that got pulled around the most. So despite the fact both eyelids are the same age, this one's been pulled around significantly more. So I'm going to go in with a clean uh, pad just with some micellar water on just to tidy up the edges Now, I am going to pause you while I go and pop some um, foundation on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. You will have absolutely no delay at all, whereas I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hey! As you can see, I decided to go for blue brows today to continue the Harlequin colours that we've got going on. Um, I used one of the Revolution coloured brow pomades uh, in, what's this one called? Trendy Turquoise. Now, I don't know whether Revolution are stopping doing these, if they were just a summer thing or if they're changing the packaging but I can't actually see any on their website anymore which is very worrying because I like them right this is uh, from a company I believe it was Glitter Hands and this is shade Golden Goddess and it's one of these water activated liners like like the Suva Beauty ones but cheaper and a UK indie brand and this is a size number one artist's brush and I'm going to get some priming water and just wet the uh, liner and coat the brush again I'm going to be looking in my little mirror down here see me back in a little bit more I seemed you out while I was doing my brows there we go and what I'm going to do is very carefully draw a line along the edge of the cut crease and then to 
do a bit of a wing. And I'm gonna wing that bit there. Like that, and I'm also going to do a second wing. I need to re wet the top of the line up because it's drying up a little bit. There we go. Now I might have made it a little bit too wet. Oopsie. Right. Do a second wing. Carry that along the lash line. So that I have a gold liner. I think it's super cute. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing the other side. I may put music on over the top so that you don't get bored listening to me not talking and concentrating. Whores at beauty con. I've been living out my beauty guru fantasy. Looking flawless with my beauty guru family. It's so perfect in my time. I saw the beauty guru life. So if you like this video, then please subscribe. Do you ever have one of those days when you think, I know what would look great 
and you do it on one eye and you love it and then you do it on the other eye and you don't love it so much having one of those days can't decide now I've done it if I like it or not but that's me all over I always try new things out on camera One thing I have noticed with this one is that it dries very, very, very quickly. The Suva one that I've got, um, I just wet it the once and I can do a whole liner with it. This one I did have to keep re-wetting. That's not a bad thing because it means it does dry out quickly enough that you can just recap it again and put it away quite quickly without having to wait for it to physically dry up for a long time. Okay, now I'm going to finish this eye look off. I'm going to go in with this flat top brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into high school, which is the peachy orange. I'm just going to run that along under the lower lash line I love this brush for getting up tight and doing a really you know sort of if you don't want if you want a more crisp line and you want to keep it just like this this brush is great for that because it gets right up under the lashes gives you a really good straight line And then I'm going to go in with, this is actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Uh, it's flat on top and it's chunky. You can just use a smudger brush or um, a densely packed blending brush, but I really like this one. And I'm going to go into Continue, question mark, which is the lemon, and use that to buff the lower lash line. Now obviously this is probably not the kind of thing that you're going to go and do your weekly shopping in. Although, when I pick Hubby up from work later, I do have to pop in and get some bread. So, well, that'll give the people in the supermarket something to look at, won't it? There. Right. Time for some highlight because let's face it, I haven't got enough colour going on on my face at the moment. Yes, darlings, that was sarcasm. This is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably about ten years ago, and this is the Ofra Nikki collab in. Cloud number nine, which is the peachy pink shift to it. So I'm going to pick up some of this and just pop it under the tail of my brow. And the same thing this side. Then I'm going to go into the inner corner just here. Now what I like to do with my eye shape is bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it into the colours that I've run underneath my eye. You don't have to do that, you can just do the inner tear duct if you wish. Lovely. Okay, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more highlight all over my face, put some mascara on, 
try and choose a lipstick that's going to work with this and I'll be right back again for you it's going to be instant uh, there we go obviously a bunch of the same highlighter everywhere I use the blowout cannabis sativa revolution mascara and the lippy is the Maybelline 376 pink for me this is one of their range which no matter how deep your skin is and whether you are uh, cool neutral or warm apparently this color will suit everybody a bit like a foundation working for every skin type but okay I'll, uh, I'll bear with you I'll, I'll listen maybe so there is my finished look inspired by these beautiful pastel terraces admittedly mine turned out a little bit deeper pastel than I was intending but I like it so much so rude I am going to go to uh, the supermarket looking like this yes I am double gold liner and everything uh, now that you've watched this if you are one of my 4F babies please double check you are still subscribed YouTube are still unsubscribing people without their knowledge or permission and when you're a small channel you notice when you suddenly lose five subscribers in a day that you hadn't even put a video up on uh, once you have double checked that and you know hit the like button for me commented maybe even shared the video with your friends I'm gonna need you to go over and check out the beautiful Nona's channel and see exactly which location she has got, courtesy of moi, and how her look turned out. Because unlike with the photo inspiration, we have different photos to inspire our looks. Nona darling, thank you so much for asking me to join in on your, um, your, your travel destination collab that you are doing. Um, I'm so so glad you asked me and I'm so glad you chose such a beautiful picture for me. I cannot wait to see uh, the look that you have done from the picture that I sent you. If you are here from Nona's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I don't always do I looks quite this wacky. Um, if you've got this far through the film I'm guessing you must have liked it just a little bit. So it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey and then jumping through whatever number of hoops YouTube are currently deciding that you have to jump through in order to get notifications because gone are the days that we could just like a channel and get told when they upload. <sighs> Halcyon days. If you're not quite sure because you're like, oh, whoa, that looks a little bit like Rusty the Clown and I'm not going to go down looking like that, thank you very much. Uh, I do have a lot of other films that you can check out so you can see that my looks aren't always quite this wild. But I had a pretty picture and I was inspired by it to produce this look. I really hope you liked it. If you didn't, that's okay. Maybe you'll like my next film. Or maybe you'll like my previous films. Only one way to find out. Subscribe and binge watch the lot. Right. All that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous darlings and I will see you next time. Bye for now.